Hi, Mr. Stu. I am an elementary school teacher and I attended one of your trainings and I believe you are actually coming to my school to lead some professional development later this year. Oh, great. I'm so excited to be there with you. I love teaching trainings to parents and therapists and other people who take care of children and teachers, of course. If you have professional development at whatever organization that you work at, about children's mental health or about kids or about understanding kids or you need that training, head over to badkidsdontexist.com and there you'll see a link that says booking and you can see all the different workshops and seminars and keynote presentations that I have to be able to go out and actually train other people how to understand kids better. So thank you so much for saying that you enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you a little bit later this year. I loved the presentation I went to and I'm feeling excited about the one coming up, but I'm feeling overwhelmed as a teacher lately. Ooh, this is something that I hear often, overwhelmed as a teacher. One of my students is struggling with mental health issues and I have 25 other kids to attend to. <laughs> yes! How can I support this student effectively while ensuring I meet the needs of all my students? This is a great question. You all, when you write in these questions, I am blown away at some of the things that you are willing to share with me and willing to ask. Thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for being vulnerable and sharing that you are feeling overwhelmed and you need some help and some tips and tricks and you want the best for your students. And that's the way teachers are. Teachers want the best for their students, it can just be hard when it seems like you've got one student who's struggling and you've got 25 other kids to keep up with. I can understand that that could feel very overwhelming, very defeating, and make you feel like sometimes you're burnt out and you wanna give up. So thank you so much for reaching out. I do have some ideas for you. This is something that comes up all the time and there are some thoughts that I have about just the concept, the concept of one kid who's struggling, and then also some ways that you can help that one child with all the other kids that you still have to deal with. The, the first thing to understand is that a lot of the tips and tricks and techniques that are shared are things that your whole class could benefit from. And that's why I said I have some thoughts about the concept of one kid who's struggling. Actually, every kid is struggling. Every, every child is struggling in some way. Now, that doesn't mean that every child is having these big explosive behaviors that are going on or that every child is going to just be so overwhelming to you, but every child needs support in different ways. So it's important for us to realize that it's not just one student who is struggling or one student who needs support. They all need support. It's just they may need support in different ways and they may be able to cope with certain things in different ways and it could be that they show it in different ways or don't show it in different ways. All that to say the first thing to keep in mind is that many of the tips and tricks and techniques that you know that will help that one student are actually great for the whole class. The biggest thing that I see when I go into schools is that children are expected to sit still and be quiet for so long. I was in a kindergarten classroom the other day and children were expected to sit still and be quiet and I was there for two hours. And for that two hours, the children were told to sit still and be quiet. Do you know how hard it is for a child who is five years old, who is just experiencing this school thing for the first time, to sit still and be quiet for two hours without a break and probably longer? I left after two hours. If you are thinking of ways that can support this one student, see if it's something that you can do for all your students. For instance, there are some things that I train teachers about, about um, not calling students out in front of the class. And I've helped write 
IEPs, those are individualized education plans for children with mental health diagnoses, where it actually says in there, uh, discipline is to be private, where the teacher actually needs to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with this student, not do it in front of everyone. Well, that's something that will help every child. It doesn't have to be that you think, oh, well, I have to treat this one child differently than all the others because I know what's going on with them. It can be, hey, I know this thing can help this kid. If it can help this one kid, it's probably going to be helpful for the whole class. And just like the last question I had talking about how kids have kept it all together all day long and then it explodes out at the end of the day when they get home, Here's something to think about as a teacher. If you are seeing a lot of your students start to fidget or you're seeing a lot of your students start to have difficulty paying attention or if they're starting to murmur, maybe it's not time to shout, be quiet. Maybe it's time that they need to release some of that energy that is all built up inside of them. So that's something that you can do with your whole class and it will benefit the one student and it will benefit all the others if every 30 minutes, every hour, you just do a little break. It can be a big stretch, a fun stretch, not a here's how we're going to stretch today, but a fun movement of some kind or some type of, hey, let's do some jumping jacks now, or let's do some push-ups, or hey, little Jimmy, why don't you tell us you can pick jumping jacks, push-ups, or sit-ups. What do you want us to do? You've done such a great job of sitting still for this last 30 minutes. You get to pick what our activity is. Are we going to run in place, do jumping jacks, or do push-ups? And little Jimmy gets to decide. Well, now you've brought in the whole class, and yes, in your mind, you can be thinking, I have to do this for this one student, but it's going to help all of my students. And that is the way you can start to think about these things that support that one student. Yes, it will support this one student if I'm using timers. Well, guess what? All little kids benefit from the use of timers. It helps them to understand this concept of time that is beyond what their brain can get at the time. Yes, little Jimmy needs some physical activity breaks throughout his school day. Well, guess what? All of the children will benefit from this physical activity break, guess what? Little Jimmy and his IEP, it's written, we don't take his recess away. So guess what? We're not taking any of our kids' recess away. There's other things we can do when it comes to discipline other than take away the one time of the day that kids get to release some of that energy. So start to think in that conceptual way where it's a system. It's not just, oh, I have to go out of my way to support Jimmy. No, it is, hey, Jimmy needs the support. I wonder if there's a way I could just do that with the whole class. If you start to think about it that way, it doesn't become a burden to help the one student and all the other students benefit as well. If you can think about it that way as a teacher, first off, kudos to you because there are so many things that can benefit kids that we leave out because we're so focused on getting them to understand the core curriculum that we forget they need support as they're learning that core curriculum. And it could be you have a star student who is able to sit still and be quiet and they're able to focus on all of their work and there's no difficulties whatsoever. Well, guess what? Even for them, it will be beneficial to implement some of those techniques. If ever you are a teacher and there is something that comes up as, hey, this child needs this thing, I don't know how to do that, or I don't know how to help the whole class experience that same benefit, please reach out. You can write in to question at mrstewtv.com and I am happy to help you figure out how to use that strategy for your entire classroom. And that's really the mindset you have to adopt is, yes, we have a document that says I have to do this thing with this student. It doesn't mean I have to do this thing with only this student and all of your students will benefit if you're able to implement some of those things from one student's IEP into the whole classroom environment. For some reasons, at some point we got away from that. 
we started to say, oh, this child needs more support or this child has a diagnosis, so we have to treat them differently in the school. It's not that. It's why don't we find ways so that all the kids can thrive. And yes, if I'm seeing that one or two or three or sometimes more of your students in the class have a mental health diagnosis and they need this extra support, well, you're correct. You can't run to little Jimmy and then run to little Susie and then run to all the other kids who need your support and do this one-on-one -on -one support with them at all times. But you can find ways if you see little Jimmy start to fidget more and you can see that he's starting to get off task and you can see it's about to go down then maybe you say hey class I can see that it is tough to keep it all together right now we're gonna take one of our physical activity breaks and Susie you get to pick what our activity is do you wanna do push-ups jumping jacks or run in place woo alright we're gonna do it for 30 seconds and go now everybody's together you're supporting this one student you're not having to take time to support only this one student and every student in the class gets the benefit. That is how you can support the one student and all the rest at the same time. Did you ever think it was possible? It is possible. Great. Thank you so much for writing in that question. And I do look forward to seeing you at your school. Make sure that uh, you didn't include your name or anything like that in the message, but uh, feel free to come up and say hello when you see me out at your school later this year.